talk a little bit about Nisa. First of all, written and directed by Julie Cavalier. Congratulations on your Venice premiere, Julie. What Congratulations to you. Thank you. It's it's been uh, surreal. It's what's amazing is that when we first sat down, we had the script. We spoke about where we saw this world premiering. Um, Venice was at the top of the list, and it's not often that you get to have the premiere you really dreamed for a project and that you felt would fit so perfectly. So eternally grateful and very excited um, that this is that this is happening. But yeah, uh, volume one is is Nisa, and it is um, and uh, we collaborated with Studio Syro as our animation studio for it, and they were um, they did a beautiful job on the collaboration. And essentially, it's about a little witch who, a precocious witch who, after losing her best friend, Broom, who is named Broom, decides to journey into the depths of the dark migration, where she is forced to learn what fear is and, and how to harness it in order to save her village from the wrath of the evil Teeming Cog. And it is it. inspired. Oh, <laughs> it is inspired by um, it's the beauty of Zoom, right? It just <laughs> um, these Zoom talkbacks. Um, but yeah, the it is inspired um, going along with the theme of reimagined. It is pulled from a lesser known Brothers Grimm tale titled uh, "The Tale of the Boy Who Went Forth to Learn What Fear Was," and then. Um, kind of played with that until it got developed and um i wrote it in this alternate world and what it would be like uh, through a female lens so i think one of the biggest things that i came to you with was that you can have a really visual narrative and it could work really well in 2d and it could be an interesting part of 2D, but it's not always the foundation of a traditional media. And I feel like one of the things we talked about was how robust the story world of Nisa needed to be in order to make it a immersive first, virtual reality first experience. And so tell the audience a little bit about what you went through in your journey to find the look and the feel and the flavor for Nisa. Yeah, um, sure. So I always had a very uh, strong visual aesthetic in mind when I was writing it. And it was just this idea, just in terms of what these art forms represented and how that built into the theme, which is, um, you know, of this world. And also the theme of Nisa was, I always wanted to start this world out with kind of this impressionistic flair in Nisa's world. I, I didn't want her world to feel bright and airy and the stereotypical sunshiny world until the clouds come rolling in. I wanted it to feel dark and weird and mysterious. We're not in a human world. And, but I did want it to feel at the same time warm and inviting and, and Nisa's home and her safe place. And so I wanted to bring in a lot of these elements, which is also why Quill works so beautifully because we wound up just hand painting everything. So I wanted it to feel have that painterly effect. Um, and then also as she transitions into the unknown, we get more of an expressionist style of, of art, style of the piece, which is harsher, uh, longer, more fragmented shadows, sharper angles, um, things that things that are high, more high contrast in ways um, and uh, just to explore that difference. And then at the end, you know, how do those worlds reconcile if they do? It's one of my favorite parts of Nisa. It's not just the characters, it's not just the narrative, but whenever I'm in headset, I'm always like, oh my, it's so beautiful and like stunning. And I'm sure one of the many reasons why the piece resonates with people when they watch it. But another part of what that resonates with people, I really feel like are the characters that you created. So just for this audience, give us a little insight into your precocious little witch and her best friend and some other Aww. characters she has in her life. 
Nisa, my girl Nisa. Um, so it was really hard to create Nisa because, you, you know, as we mentioned, the scripts, I had the first draft in 2019. So she's been living in, in my head for quite a while and then putting a face to that and embodying these things. And actually, I also had the idea of just borrowing from some, um, some cubist elements because I didn't want her face to be this Disney princess. I wanted her to be quirky. I wanted it to be imperfect, but, but all her own and charming and rough and messy and all of these things. Um, I often said she's a bit like um, Amelie, um, the film Amelie, if Amelie rolled around in the dirt all day and was just scrappy. So I got a little bit of inspiration from this um, actress I, I love and adore. I'm not going to say who, but if you guess it, good, good for you. Um, but I did want her clothes to be ill-fitting. I wanted her hair to have texture. I wanted it to kind of be all over the place. I wanted it to not work, but somehow it does, if that makes sense. Put all together, it has a charm. She has a charm and um, a personality. Yeah, one of the things I feel like was really early on when we were talking about doing animation for this piece was like, we didn't, we didn't want Nisa to be sexualized. We wanted her to be in this yes. phase of her life where she was coming into herself as a woman, but not yet fully realized as a woman, but also not fully de-matured as a child either. And I feel like what you did with the concept artist, you struck such a great balance. And what we did with the amazing voiceover actress, Alex Cazares, who voices Nisa was like, you found that scrappy preteen kid. That's just like, why can't I go play with my friends every day and run around in the dirt and do dangerous things? And of course the person who's telling her not to do those things as uh, her mother and her fellow villagers. So mother. give us a little insight into Nisa's support system, as we would call it these days. Yes. And so, you know, and just going um, back to Nisa for just a second, one thing, and, and you bring up a good point, and one thing I was constantly thinking about was what, you know, what her spirit would be like if unencumbered. What could her spirit be like if unencumbered? And there's this old book I read a long, long time ago. And you know, when I was visiting uh, Salem, Massachusetts, which is kind of this the witch capital of the U.S., and I was talking about how um, females are at the greatest potential of their power just before society sexualizes them. So we were, I was trying to strike that. And then of course, Marmy, um, who is her mother. And what was important to me about Marmy was that she's not just this nagging mom who, like she has her own set of experiences and she was also like Nisa when she was young. She was this precocious thing, but more, but had this devastating, almost, you know, deathly experience and then that forever changed her. And so I wanted to kind of capture that and not that she was nagging or weak, but just bound by the earth and, and grounded and maybe a bit regretful about um, the path she took. And, and so has trepidation about passing this lesson on to her daughter, but it's the only, lesson she knows that will keep her safe so there's there's that element to it and then and then the villagers the the children of the village it was important that they didn't feel human and then really for my own amusement um and what the concept artist had the you know the young girl with the pigtails and i asked if we could just revert it um and then if she could be the one that says the dark migration, but that was only, that was for my own sense of humor. So, just want to tell everyone, thank you so much for watching thank this. Thank you, Julie, for your amazing vision. Thank you for being such a, you know, a incredible multi-year collaborator. We've been in this game for a hot second together. Woo! Um, Woo! And this is like our first big vision coming to life, seeing Misa at Venice. Um, for anyone who and would thank like to you, Michaela. Touch, 
And thank you, Michaela, for because it is not easy. This was this was a, a behemoth, and it's as the lead producer, it is not easy to keep the train on on the tracks. And um, I thank you, the creative team we had, and the animators, as Michaela said, they're just amazing and so so talented and. You know, I, I hope everyone enjoys it. And then I, I hope you come uh, check us out for volumes two and three. <laughs>